me uh, tonight. And like my partner over there, I also have insurance, State Farm. Uh, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about State Farm insurance. Um, as you know, you've seen the commercials, um, you know that State Farm is a family company. Um, and now that we're able to recognize um, what have been domestic partnerships is actually families and husbands and wives, what better opportunity is there to take some time to talk about State Farm and how we can help you with that. Whether you're starting a family and you want some financial planning, um, because when you have children, you have a different set of responsibilities. And life insurance for that takes on so much more of a meaning when you have your wife that you have to think about or your husband if something were to happen to you, what would be of them? Um, so it is uh, the most selfless thing that you can do. Uh, also, whether you're getting a car or buying a home together, State Farm has always been there and will continue to be there. And I'd like to establish that relationship with each of you and become your good neighbor. And I'm not going to take much more of your time. Um, but I am back there and I have cars and I also have my computer, if you like to <laughs> Um, and if I can do anything to assist you in any way, um, even outside of my State Farm, I like to also um, develop partnerships. I love to support small businesses because I myself own a small business. So if there's anything I can do, if you want to give me cards, give me cards. And if I have clients that come in and I can promote you, I do the same for you. Um, and that is all. I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. So again, ladies and gentlemen, there is food and refreshments available for you. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Hello. I said hello, everyone. Hello. It's hot outside. The sun is brutally disrespectful today. <laughs> and actually, uh, our event, we plan to have a photo shoot from 5 until 6 but it's so hot outside. I think it's best that we uh, reschedule that and we'll do that at a later date. We, this is the, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Gwen Clements. I'm the co-founder of Relationship Unleashed. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization along with my son, David Clements. And we are founded on the premises of fighting inequality for the LGBT community, LGBTQ community and promoting empowerment. That's what our premises is. We've been in existence for almost a year, and this is the second of our uh, premises of our organization. And we have three more workshops scheduled after this, one every Monday in the next following months of August, September, and October. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep pushing our agenda because one thing that the LGBTQ community in the South have to understand that we have to be visible and we have to be out front and we have to lead the charge in order to change the things that control our lives. So the title and the subject of our workshop tonight is why marriage equality matters and also the truth change. I'm going to talk a little bit about both. And we have Dr. Matt Matthews from the Memphis Theological Seminary that's going to give us a biblical perspective on marriage and the tradition of marriage and clear up some things and some conception and misperception that we have about the Bible. And we're going to allow time for questions and peer-to-peer -peer discussions from anyone that have in anything that they may need to pose to Davey and myself or Dr. Matthews. One thing that the LGBTQ community have to understand that we didn't just get here by sheer circumstance and luck. We got here on an equal ground. What I mean by getting here for marriage equality was because a lot of grassroots organizations like ours was in the fight. And it started actually in the 90s. In the 90s, uh, a plaintiff from Hawaii petitioned the state because Hawaii had a law that same-sex couples could not get married. And the movement shifted and it gained momentum all the way up until 2004, when our first state in the United States allowed same-sex couple marriages to be recognized was in Maryland. And the movement continued. It continued in the Windsor versus the United States 
when you had Edith Windsor, who was in her 70s, and had been in a relationship with her partner for 40 years. And upon her partner's death, she was fined because her partner left all of her property to her. And actually, she and her partner were legally married in the state of Canada. But because the federal government did not recognize same-sex marriage under the DOMA law, she had to fight the United States to overturn that. That was the Defense of Marriage Act, signed in 1994 by President Bill Clinton. And as a result of the DOMA being overturned in 2013, we saw a wave of states join in on the acceptance of same-sex couples being granted the privilege of re being recognized under the Constitution and saying that they could be married. Because the traditional definition that was used was marriage was defined as one man and one woman. There is a lot of dynamics to that definition. It didn't just start because someone was smart and to say that this is how we define marriage. That definition comes from church. And our United States was founded under the premises that church and state would be separate. And we've been in the bed with the church too long. We've also allowed the church to, to pass rules and laws in, against certain uh, groups because they say that it's in the Bible. Equality is, in, is offered to everyone under the United States Constitution, regardless of your race, regardless of who you love. And there should not be any instances where we are forced to a, be governed by a law that says you cannot marry who you love. And for too long that has taken place. But the latest Gallup poll shows that the cultural shift, and what that means is that our citizens in the United States have turned the tide and are now over 55% favorable of same gender marrying each other. What does that mean for us? What that means is this, marriage is more than you going into a covenant with someone because you love. Marriage is more than that. What marriage guarantees is that I am entitled to the same rights under the law as heterosexuals. For instance, before this law was passed, there were countless instances where people in long-term relationship health took a turn for the worse. And the family of one of those two partners would shut this person out because they had no legal standards to even come to the hospital to visit them. They would go in and take all the property from these people. And those were things that you could not get no matter how long you and this person been in a relationship unless you were wise enough to set up a probate will and have this thing notarized. But now, what we have and what we're standing on is equality. And for equality, there has never been a popular social movement where the majority want to give up their right or their privilege for the minority. And one thing that the minority have to understand is that in order to be strong, in order to be relevant in our culture, you have to come out. You cannot stand in the shadows anymore and be ashamed about who you are or who you love, you have to come out. And one thing that's been associated with the acceptance among heterosexuals or allies for the LGBTQ community is that people begin to recognize you as a person as opposed to your sexuality. They can put a face with someone that they call transgender. They can put a face with someone that they call a lesbian. They can put a face with someone that they call bisexual. And once you begin to put a face with this person, it also diminishes the stereotype that's been painted about us through the media. And if I'm not wrong, most of the media portrayal of the people in our community is negative. So in order for us to keep the movement, we have to be visible. We have to have events like this especially in Memphis, Tennessee, an area in our country that's notorious for being called the Bible Belt, an area in our country that's notorious for being the last one to accept and embrace, embrace change. 
We were the last part of the union to embrace segregation. So going forward, you will understand that throughout your lifetime and your parents' lifetime, the truth has changed. At one time, there was a law against interracial marriage. And the justification for that law was because of biblical principles. We're not trying to dismantle tradition, but what we are trying to do, we're trying to dismantle a laws against our right that the Constitution grant, grant us under the 14th Amendment and our civil rights laws of 1964. At one time, slavery was legal in our country. And the justification for slavery was our Bible. Biblical principles stood and allowed slavery to last in this country for hundreds of years. But the truth changed. The truth changed in 1964 in Loving versus Virginia when they overturned the law that says that interracial couples couldn't get married. 1964, Brown versus the education. The truth changed. The truth changed when black kids and little white kids were no longer segregated. And they said that that was not supported by the law. So the truth changed. At one time, liquor was illegal. But the truth changed. You can go to the liquor store when you get ready. At one time, <laughs> marijuana was illegal. But the truth changed in Colorado and in California and in some parts of New York where you can have small quantities of marijuana. So the truth changed. At one time, as my son said, they told us the world was flat. But we now know that the world is round. So the truth changed. At one time, they said that a man couldn't go to the moon. But the truth changed because we've been all the way to Pluto <laughs> and Mars and Jupiter. So the truth changed. The truth changed all the time. And on June the 25th, at 9.30 a.m. in the morning, the truth changed. When the United States Supreme Court said that this was against the law, that you could not deny same-sex couple the same right to be lawfully married and enjoy the privilege that we're covered under the law. So now I have tax privileges with my wife. We do not have to leave the state of Tennessee, which we did in 2013, to get married. Now on my job, my wife can enjoy my medical benefits, whereas once, once before she could. I can add her. Now, I don't have to worry about her being left out on things that she's entitled to under the law for a same-sex couple as it once was before. So going forward in our community, especially in our hometown, we have to be vigilant. We have to stay in the fight. We cannot get consumed with commercialism, people. We cannot get off track. When you get off track and you get consumed with other things other than what's going on and what's important in your life, you don't even realize what's being formulated. Right now, just like the turn the gay away bills. Right now, the state of Texas drafting bills. Right now. So. That's my, that's my hope. That's what I wanted to share with you all. Why marriage equality matters. It matters to me now because now I am legally married in the state of Tennessee. That's why marriage equality matters to me. Clap one more time for my mother. Great job, great job. I want to take time and uh, acknowledge our sponsors. Uh, we want to thank Michael Moore Catering for catering this wonderful food in here today. We want to thank Popeyes for donating 100 pieces of chicken today to us. Memphis Pizza Cafe for the pizzas. And my good friend Byron, he donated the drinks in here. And Timothy for helping. And Starbucks, we have coffee in the back. My good friend Scott donated wine. That was Jesus' first miracle. Hello, somebody. So, eat up, drink up. We're gonna have a good time. But I wanna take a couple of minutes of your time to talk about the truth changes. And my mother, she went down the list of all the 
times in history when the truth changed. But in order for the truth to change now,